Well, last week I asked you guys to join my group where I asked questions and you guys actually came and an or asked me some questions. So let's just dive into the first one. So the first one is, have you done a video on multicam for DR15? I haven't done one, but because I'm answering it now, I'm going to do a quick one. All right, so let's just jump right into it. All right, so here in DaVinci, I have uh, some footage, it's my interview, and I have uh, two clips, or two sets of clips that are obviously from two different cameras, because this is 3, 4, 27, 28. They're different cameras and uh, different frame rates. Uh, actually, yeah, this one's 24 and this one's 30. So we'll just throw them both into a multicam. So all you're gonna do is the content that you're going to make into a multicam, you're just going to highlight it all, right click, and we're gonna go create new multicam. Multicam clip. Jeez. Okay, so then once we are in here, we're just going to state a couple of things. The biggest one that I've been hearing people ask me about is the syncing. So there's multiple ways to sync clips. If you don't have one of these, I suggest getting them. That's the easiest way to sync clips. Um, if you have a bit on the higher end, obviously you're going to use timecode, but if you're just using audio and you don't have cue points using a slate, we're gonna come into here and we're gonna go to sound. Okay, so you click sound, we highlighted all the clips that are for this particular interview, and we are going to hit create. Then it's going to analyze all the clips. It's going to align them in the timeline, and this process can sometimes take a little, oh, okay, we're already done. So now nothing actually happened. We have this multi-clamp. Wow, multi-cam timeline, if we open it, uh, let's just make these a little smaller. <clears throat> if we open that and drag this down, actually, you know what, screw this. We are going to go here and we make this a little bit bigger. What you'll see is that we have clips scattered. So what we're gonna do is this is our multicam timeline. We're never going to touch this timeline, okay? So we'll just close this. If you don't know how to get these up, uh, you just come into here and then you can see all of your timelines that you have. So let's just uh, close that. And then we're gonna come over, well, you can put it wherever you want, but I'm, I like to put it in my master, my main timeline. I'm gonna create a timeline, okay? So now I have my timeline, it's right here, I'm in timeline one. We're gonna go to where that multicam is and we're gonna bring that in, okay? And then it'll just show up, it'll be a nice clean timeline. It, everything will be in one. And if obviously you play this through, whichever is the top video, that's the only one that's going to be playing here. So it's kind of, you know, it's a pain in the ass because you don't see it. Here's the fun, or the, here's the good part. If you, let's close this. If you come into here and you go to multicam, now because our playhead is here, this will have all of our multicam. Now, if we come in and we start to play this, Actually, it's coming a little bit where and we start to play this. Now we have both of our uh, cameras. We have both of our cameras here and we can see the one gentleman, he's talking, she's just listening. And let's say we, we want it to cut this now. Uh, all we would have to do is we play it, right? And we're just watching this. And so currently he's talking. This is the one that's active. You can see the outline there. She is agreeing, so we don't have to cut to her yet. Let's see when she starts talking. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, she's about to start talking. So now we click on her and it's going to cut. Now my mouse cursor is a razor, so it cuts to her. And you can see down here, it's indicated a cut. So now he's just agreeing, so we can cut back to seeing him agree. Okay, kind of screwed that up, but. So she's talking and she's telling her story. And then let's just say we cut back, right, to him. Okay, now we got him listening. We can cut back to here. Okay, so this is a good setup for four cameras. And, but we can come into here 
and we can obviously have way more, four by four, you know what I mean? So there are a lot of options in here for all of your cameras. Now, let's say we have some cuts in here that we don't agree with. So if we want to change a clip, so like let's say we wanna change this back to our first angle, right? I don't know why this is all screwed up right here, but let's say we wanna change this back to our first angle. What we're gonna hit is Alt and then one, and it'll change back to the first angle for this within this cut. So I can go back to cam angle four or angle one, okay? And if we look, when we open this up, it'll say angle four or angle one, and go back to four, one. And then you can, just like you would edit normally, you could drag these. So when he was, she was talking and then we had him like do the little nod. So he does his little nod, he stops with his nod, then we can bring this back over to go back to her. And all of this stuff will never affect if we come back over to our multicam we open in timeline, it'll never affect this. So our timing, all that stuff will never be affected as much as we cut over here and switch back and forth between things. And um, all of our audio synced up. One thing that kind of sucks, um, and it really depends on how your project's set up, I would, in a situation like this, I would have my both my cameras getting scratch audio and then I would have an external recorder for either a boom that was in between them or if they were lobbed up and had lav mics on them. Um, I would have that separately. Because right now, the way that this is set up, whenever you switch cameras, it's going to switch audio for that camera as well. Because if you look down here, it's switching the uh, video to angle four and the audio to four. So that's something that you have to be cautious of when you're um, going back and forth. If you just wanted to bring in one of the angles, one of the audio angles, you could just unlink, then grab that audio. Wait, you just grab this particular audio and you know move that audio across everything. So then we'll have our um, angles switching back and forth, right? And that's perfectly fine, but our audio always stays on angle four if like that's the camera that has, if you're uh, pulling all audio into that one camera. So then you'll just have down here that. So that's how that goes. And then you would obviously lock this so that when you're editing this and cutting back and forth, so if we watch it and we cut back and forth, it's only editing um, just this one. Okay, so I think that kind of covers how multicam works and then audio and audio syncing and syncing multiple clips together. So, to the next question. Number count one to 10K. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to grab whatever our video is. In this case, it's just going to be a solid. I'm gonna make my solid that color. And you're just gonna want to, you're gonna put your video clip there and then you're gonna wanna go into Fusion. Then in Fusion, we're gonna grab our text because we're gonna use a text tool to write our number. And then now, if we would put one, and then we go to our next frame, or we have to keyframe that. Then we go to our next frame and we put two, go to our next frame, and we put three, and there we go. One, ooh, that went really fast. One, two, three. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, <laughs> what we're gonna do is uh, come up here and we're going to go to edit controls. I went over in a previous video to do something similar to this, but we'll just do it here. And then we're going to just put in here um, number. You can name this whatever you want to, to be honest. We're gonna keep this at number. And then uh, for pages, we're just gonna have it on the text page, because that would be this page. And then a slider, and then we hit okay. And now down here, we have a new one that's called number, right? So we can say we want uh, at frame 10 to be a count of one. I'll keyframe that. And then at frame 60, we wanna have, what was it, 10, that, no, it's over 9,000. So we'll have 9,000 here, and then we'll come back to one. Okay, so now we have 
one, 9,001. Okay, so up here, expression, I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna type in number because we wanna get the value from the number from down here. So now this value we have up here. But what you can see is that we have a whole bunch of depths. Okay, this is like moving way too fast. So we'll just do one to uh, 60. So now we have, you know, this counting up. So to get rid of the decimal point, what we're gonna do is that in front of it, so we'll just put this together, right? So that stays as a value in itself. And we're gonna put math.floor, okay? And what that does is it just gets rid of the decimal point. Now. This is good and bad. It gets rid of the decimal point, so that's good. But if you see here, this is 52.92, so it's closer to 53. If you need to be exact with your rounding, um, you need to change this. So if you're rounding to the closest like 0.5, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this number and we're just going to put plus 0 0.5. So now it's always 0 0.5. So it's going to come up to 53, 42, okay? So hopefully you're following me here. If we go down to, let's go below that, 49.38, we're gonna have 49, right? So this is gonna be, this number here is gonna be obviously below our 0.5, so rounding it, it would stay at 49. If we're just dropping everything after, we're gonna be at 49. Here, we're, we're above, so we're at 51. Are you following me there? Okay, so at the beginning here, we're gonna put math floor. So now we, we round correctly. And that's how we would do our counting. When you can count to whatever you want, you can make keyframes and you can change this number to whatever you want. And then that's what you'll be at. And it'll count. And there's something weird that you can do with this as well. I don't know why in the world you would ever want to do this, but you could ease the numbers. I don't know, but I just thought I would share that with you. So count really fast and then slow down. But these numbers are crazy big, so it's not even noticeable. But just thought I would offer that. All right, so that's how you count up from one to 10,000. Let's go off to the next one. I'm curious if there's a way to quickly white balance color correct footage. Okay. Um, White balance and color correct are two completely different things. We'll try to get both of these shots and we'll just bring them on to this timeline and they are really freaking long. So we'll just cut them down. Whoops. Cut them both down. Uh, okay. So there we go. We have our two shots, then we come over into the color tab. And let's close that, close that. So we'll close that and that. Okay, so to white balance quickly, you can come over here and they have this auto white balance. So that's kind of, you know, something that you can do. Um, is it good? Eh, you know, I don't really like it. And then you could also take this little color picker and you could find a white. So you could grab this white, which that was a light. So that was kind of more in the blue. So add it red, or you could grab these if they were supposed to be white, um, you know. So that's kind of how you could white balance. If that's, if you want to find like an auto way, what'd you say? I don't think it was auto. I think you just said quick, a quick way. So that's kind of a quick way. Um, if you have a, hold on a second, if you have a, uh, what did 
the hell is it? Well, I can't find it, but my color chart, you would actually use the color matcher over here, and that's kind of a quicker way to do it. I did a video if you want to see it. It's up in the corner, whichever corner, um, of using one. I was gonna show you what it looks like, but I can't find it. Uh, let me see if I can find some footage that I shot using it, and then I'll uh, show you. Okay, wow, that took me longer than I was expecting, but here you go. So, bring this clip in, drop it in here. So what I do is I take a shot with the uh, color chart, and this was obviously for the drone, and then you just use that on all of your other shots. So you bring that in, oh fuck. Um, come over here, and then this is how you would start your uh, grade if you did want to use one of these. You come in here, and you just simply connect this up, just like this, right? And then you go match, and then you kind of have your shot. And then this is how you would have consistency throughout shots. Obviously, um, we could make this. There we go. So now we're at, we're at like a better spot here. And then you just simply take this shot and we'll go to clips. And now you can start this shot at that same spot. So then we are starting somewhere that's like half decent. Right, and then you can start coloring your shots from there. Next one is, I often want to make resolve edits around audio cues and I don't really know how to give myself any kind of indication of sound even inside of the fusion tab. Audio cues, if you're wanting to edit to audio, you could just simply come into here, click this button here. And if you have these open, so if they're down like this, you can just open them up and you can make your audio bigger. Click this, then you can see your audio. There is a post on Blackmagic's website about the Fusion um, tab not currently having any audio. Um, I'm guessing that it's something that they're gonna work on later because they said that it was gonna take 12 to 18 months to fully implement DaVinci Resolve or Fusion into DaVinci Resolve to be equivalent to the standalone. Uh, in the standalone, you do have audio but it's only, um, you can only hear it. You can't visually see it. Cause I know like a, a lot of people are coming from like After Effects and you can actually see the waveform like you can here in the edit. I'm pretty sure they're going to implement it, but currently there is no audio on the Fusion page. So we're kind of just waiting. It's the waiting game. And that's kind of all I really have for you for today. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you want to have your question in the next questions i don't even know what i'm calling this series or show or whatever uh you can go to my website and on the top of my website i have a link to the group where you can ask those questions when i say hey i'm looking for questions um but yeah with that being said my name's jr and thanks for watching